Hello, my name is Janet Lord and I'm a board member of the United States International Council on Disabilities. And I'm very pleased to be able to introduce this module entitled Disability Inclusive Wash, Water, Sanitation and Hygiene as an Element of Article 32 Implementation, that is Implementation of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This module, like others in the series, is brought to you by the U.S. International Council on Disabilities with the generous support of Rehabilitation International. The module addresses a specific topic in inclusive development, namely disability inclusion in the context of water, sanitation, and hygiene projects funded through international development cooperation. It's a critically important sector as access to water and sanitation implicates many fundamental human rights. There are several learning objectives for this module like the others in the series. One is to understand the importance of unrestricted access to wash facilities for everyone. Another is to understand the barriers that persons with disabilities experience in WASH access and the connection of these issues to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. A third is to identify entry points for organizations of persons with disabilities to engage in WASH activities. And finally, we'd like to review a few emerging good practices and, and approaches in ensuring access to WASH in the context of inclusive development. So let's begin. Well, first of all, what is WASH? Well, in the international development sector, WASH refers to clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. In the context of international development, it refers, of course, to development projects that support these services of access to clean water and basic toilets and good hygiene practices. Now, according to UNICEF, worldwide, 2.2 billion people still lack access to safe drinking water. More than half of the global population does not have access to safe sanitation and 3 billion people around the world do not have access to hand washing facilities with soap. And still, some 673 million people practice open defecation. And people living in rural areas and, and urban settlements, disaster prone areas and low income countries are often the very most vulnerable and the most affected by inaccessible wash. Persons with disabilities, of course, who tend to live among the poorest of the poor are particularly at risk for inaccessible water, sanitation, and hygiene. So why does disability inclusive wash matter? Well, one in seven people live with a disability, so 15% of the world population or about a billion people. And 80% of these individuals with disabilities live in developing countries where they're more likely to face barriers in accessing WASH. And 2.4 billion people lack access to sanitation. 663 million access to safe drinking water, as we've seen. And of these, many are individuals with disabilities. What's the impact of non-inclusive wash? Well, sexual and financial exploitation, deteriorations in health and hygiene, unwillingness to engage in community and social interactions because of stigma, higher costs, and communal facilities. Often, no facilities at all that are accessible in schools. Yet another reason why too often children with disabilities do not attend school. There's two videos you can click on this slide 
that will link you to two excellent videos, one from the World Bank showing an animation about some of these issues, and another one showing local experiences for Disability Wash. They both provide additional context for understanding the importance of Disability Inclusive Wash. So take a moment to review those two videos. What are some of the key issues in disability inclusive water sector operations? Well, the slide lists just a few of these, such as lack of attention to disability and water resources management, attitudinal and societal stigma towards families who have disabled family members, physical barriers in using WASH facilities for individuals with disabilities, particularly for those who have physical disabilities, but also physical barriers posing problems for blind people or people who have low vision. Distance to water points can make WASH inaccessible for many people with disabilities. The design of water points and sanitation facilities, of course, can pose significant barriers. The design of hand washing facilities can make it very difficult for persons with disabilities in some instances to access those facilities or for older persons, for example, who may have arthritis. Carrying and transporting water is a key issue and problem and could be very difficult or impossible for persons with disabilities. Accessing water for household needs, often a major issue. And finally, safety concerns. Think here about the hazards that might be posed by inaccessible uh, wash facilities. Think too about exposure to violence and, and danger where wash facilities are located far away or in unsafe areas without appropriate lighting. The Sustainable Development Goals address accessible wash in several important respects. So Sustainable Development Goal number six, which is to ensure the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all, requires that governments pay special attention to the needs of people in vulnerable situation, which of course includes individuals with disabilities, and also requires governments to achieve adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene. Here, it also underlines the need for community participation in improving access to resources. Several of the SDG six targets are inclusive of persons with disabilities in their respective calls for achieving by 2030, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all and access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and an end to open defecation. And specifically, it calls for attention in these targets to be paid to the needs of women and girls and persons in vulnerable situations, which of course includes persons with disabilities. Now, other of the SDGs are also relevant in thinking about inclusive and accessible WASH. SDG 4 addresses the need to, uh, to ensure that the design of education facilities is responsive to the needs of students with disabilities. SDG 11 and, and 10 also address important elements of access. SDG 10 addresses inequality and discrimination. Of course, the failure to provide an accessible wash facility in a school, for example, would constitute discrimination. SDG 11 addresses sustainable cities and communities. Clearly accessible wash is an important aspect of urban areas. And SDG 5 addresses gender equality. And it's well recognized and understood and supported by the evidence, of course, that in many instances, women and girls are particularly vulnerable in this context of 
accessing safe and accessible wash facilities and can suffer gender and sexual based violence in this context, particularly where wash facilities are poorly designed and not well lit and so on. The vast majority of countries around the world have fortunately ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And so there's a legal basis for disability inclusion in WASH. Article 32, of course, calls for international cooperation activities to be disability inclusive. And substantial investments are very often made in the area of water and sanitation. So this means that this whole sector of development must, under the terms of the treaty and Article 32, be inclusive of persons with disabilities. Now, Article 28 of the CRPD specifically obligates states to ensure that persons with disabilities have access to an adequate standard of living. This includes access to clean water and sanitation and hygiene facilities. There are many other articles in the CRPD that are relevant. Here we could speak again of non-discrimination on the basis of disability in Article 5, or obligations regarding accessibility to the built environment in Article 9, or health in Article 25, understanding that access to water and sanitation clearly is a major determinant of health. Connecting disability inclusive WASH to advocacy is important especially for organizations of persons with disabilities who are well placed to serve as expert resources and implementers of accessible WASH. Take a moment to reflect on what advocacy might look like in this context of inclusive WASH. How might you design an advocacy strategy to ensure that water and sanitation projects being planned, for example, by a development donor will be inclusive of persons with disabilities. What would you advise a donor to do to ensure that its WASH project was appropriately inclusive of persons with disabilities? Think and perhaps jot down on a piece of paper or your computer three to five major steps that you might take in this regard. This slide addresses the impact of COVID-19 on persons with disabilities in the WASH context. People with disabilities are more at risk during the COVID-19 epidemic, and this risk is compounded by the fact that key interventions for disease prevention, WASH, is all too often inaccessible to people with disabilities. As COVID-19 continues to have wide-reaching impacts across the globe, it is important to note how persons with disabilities are uniquely impacted by the pandemic. People with disabilities may be reliant on carers, but they are rarely supported to understand how to meet another person's WASH requirements. A number of practical modifications to intervention design and delivery can result in improved accessibility of WASH programming. The inclusion of people with disabilities and their carers in the design of interventions during the COVID-19 response is very important if these modifications are, come, are to be useful and well implemented. One intervention in response to the COVID-19 pandemic has been international funding, programming, and media messaging in support of WASH. Clearly, persons with disabilities who are at risk of the negative consequences of COVID-19 need access to these interventions. For some guidance on inclusive WASH during the COVID pandemic, click on the resource provided here by Help Age International. This slide shows a diagram created by WaterAid, and it shows their process of improving water and sanitation resources for persons living with disabilities. 
by, for example, connecting them with community members and actively working together to design better facilities. The process is dependent on open communication and active listening from all facets of the community in order to create effective solutions. This is a useful step-by-step -step process that may help us think about how to effectively implement an inclusive WASH project. First of all, WaterAid staff and partners need to be aware of how human rights connect to this issue. They need to have the skills and confidence to implement an inclusive WASH program from the start of the project. Marginalized groups, of course, like persons with disabilities and individuals need to be aware of their rights to wash in their communities. And those groups need to actively participate in wash management committees and in activities and decision making, for example, about where a, an accessible well might be built or in designing structures for sanitation and hygiene in schools. WaterAid staff and partners need to collaborate on an ongoing basis to collect evidence on the barriers to wash and actually address them. WaterAid partners support communities to use this evidence in engaging decision makers in designing an inclusive wash program. And the WASH sector, wider sectors, and civil society must work together to advocate for an inclusive WASH approach as a human right, not something that's just a plus or a matter of charity. It's a right. Decision makers need to be aware of their responsibilities and provide, monitor, and enforce inclusive WASH. They are held to account through effective systems of monitoring and evaluation. So that really sums up uh, the approach taken, the highly participatory approach taken by Water Aid in ensuring that WASH is implemented in an inclusive way. This slide highlights the intersections of gender and disability and emphasizes the intersecting and aggravated forms of discrimination that are so often experienced by women and girls with disabilities. Many of these forms of discrimination remain largely invisible, absent, and unaddressed in large-scale WASH programs. Now, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Article 6, the article on women with disabilities, underlines the multiple discrimination that women and girls with disabilities face in accessing all of their rights and obliges states to ensure their full and enjoyment, equal enjoyment of all rights and fundamental freedoms. This, of course, includes in access to wash facilities in school or access to an adequate standard of living under Article 28. Gender considerations must be taken into account. And again, we do know from evidence that women and girls with disabilities are especially at risk for sexual and gender-based violence. An accessible wash in schools and communities is therefore a critical component of ensuring non-discrimination and equality for women and girls with disabilities. The next several slides address emerging good practices and present some case studies from different countries where disability inclusive WASH is happening. The United Nations flagship report on disability and development published in 2018 reports on efforts by various actors, including governments and international organizations and on how to mainstream disability in water sanitation and hygiene programs. Some of the suggestions contained in that report are addressing discrimination and stigma when providing WASH services, raising awareness and building capacity about the rights and needs of persons with disabilities in all phases of WASH programming from planning through to evaluation, mandating minimum accessibility standards and considering disability in the design of all WASH interventions, 
and designing and building wash facilities according to principles of universal design. This is the first example on this slide of a case study involving an inclusive, a disability inclusive approach to WASH. This is a project implemented by the World Bank and the government of Indonesia. The figure on this slide details the five component strategy of Indonesia's community based drinking water and sanitation program, this World Bank supported project. The bank's project incorporates disability inclusive approaches in each of the five components. Component one is community empowerment and local institutional development. There, organizations of persons with disabilities are engaged on an ongoing basis. Component two is improving hygiene and sanitation behavior and services and supporting households in access. This too in, engaged with uh, members of families uh, with, with disabilities and communities as well to improve hygiene and ensure that this outreach was actually accessible to persons with disabilities. Component three concerned water supply and public sanitation infrastructure. Blocks were granted, block grants were supplied in order to help scale up water supply systems and to develop new systems for some villages. This too incorporated universal access approaches and standards. Component four, village and district grants provided incentives to districts to perform well and to opti optimize existing community water systems, again with accessibility and universal access standards being implemented. And the implementation support and management project included oversight to ensure that these project components were addressed. This slide highlights a disability inclusive wash program in a rural district in Zimbabwe and the effect that accessible sanitation facilities had on this community. Please click on the video to learn more about this project. This next slide is another World Bank approach to ensuring inclusive WASH. The World Bank is working to capture disability data throughout its programming, including in WASH programs. The Household Wash Survey, conducted as part of the Poverty and Social Impact Analysis and Diagnostic of the Wash Sector in Tajikistan, for example, used the short set of questions from the Washington Group on Disability Statistics for disaggregation on the basis of dis disability and included specific questions to assess the access of persons with disabilities to wash resources in the community. Over 3,000 households were sampled, and it was discovered that about 9% had at least one household member who had significant disability. About half of the sampled households reported having a member with a disability who had somewhat limited activities as a result. Among the larger group, about 24% of the households reported that persons with disabilities could not access the main water source without assistance. 14% reported that people with disabilities in their household had some or a lot of difficulty in accessing the main water source. Commonly cited barriers were distance to the water source, carrying or transporting water being difficult, lack of accessibility features such as ramps and difficulty of the terrain including questions about accessible wash on the household survey, survey was incredibly important for the bank to understand the barriers and then to understand how they could best be remedied within the context of a wash program design. 
In this case study, UNICEF's efforts in Afghanistan is highlighted. For every new school toilet facility that has been supported by UNICEF since 2012, the facility has been constructed to be accessible to children with disabilities. These inclusive facilities include things like ramps for each toilet block and cubicles that are accessible for children with disabilities. The toilets are also raised to a higher height and include grab rails surrounding the toilet for safety and to assist with mobility. The next highlight regards an inclusive WASH program in informal settlements in South Africa. It features a project from South Africa where inclusive WASH focused particularly on women living in informal settlements where water access is especially challenging. Click on the video for more information about this project. WaterAid Uganda has made significant strides towards ensuring disability inclusion in WASH projects. This video presents a case study of WaterAid's project and focuses on the costs of inclusive WASH. And finally, there's other guidance and emerging good practices and approaches to inclusive WASH. The World Bank's Water and Sanitation Program published a guidance note on including persons with disabilities in water sector operations. It identifies a number of entry points for disability inclusive water operations in World Bank projects. Guidance published by UN agencies and programs includes UNICEF series that focuses on including children with disabilities in humanitarian action. It includes a, an entire volume on WASH in the context of children with disabilities in humanitarian emergencies. The Interagency Standing Committee's Guidelines on Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities in Humanitarian Action provides detailed coverage of accessible WASH in humanitarian contexts. Those guidelines were published in 2019. And finally, this is an opportunity to reflect on specific measures that can be undertaken to ensure disability inclusive WASH in the context of a development project. Think about how you might develop a checklist for an inclusive WASH project. What questions would you want to ask? If you were doing an audit of a WASH project and doing a site visit, perhaps to view toilet facilities in a school, or a well being constructed in a village, or a latrine in a household, what questions would you need to consider? How would you write that down in a checklist for someone else to undertake an accessibility audit? Take a few minutes to think about that before moving on. The next slide provides some additional resources addressing the intersection of WASH and disability. These include the guidance note mentioned, published by the World Bank, some materials by UNICEF and WaterAid, World Vision, and one of the world's leading experts on disability inclusive WASH, Hazel Jones, and her work on mainstreaming disability and aging in water, sanitation, and hygiene programs. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this module.